I am back with another Ohio sports update for you guys. We're going to start with the Columbus crew who had a very good week both on and off the pitch. Starting with last Saturday's win 2-0 over Nashville at home. The crew now carry a five match unbeaten streak with only one draw in there. They put pressure on early against Nashville and that resulted in a goal from Christian Ramirez who has been getting more and more involved on the goal scoring side of things. Obviously with the crew you know Cucho Hernandez and Lucas El Arayan are always going to be heavily involved in those kind of things but as the season has gone on Christian Ramirez his name is getting more and more attention when it comes to goal scoring and chances involved with the crew it's nice to see him coming into his own speaking of Lucas El Arayan, he was back in the lineup for this one after being pulled away for international duty he was very impactful in this game just watching it and his impact for the crew is was definitely missed and is definitely welcomed back now, for me, the longer the score was 1-0 into the second half, the more nervous that I get as a crew fan, especially considering that we've seen this team have these leads late in the game and we've seen them squandered away and maybe they only get one point when they should have gotten three. And especially with some of the chances late in the game that the crew could have made it 2-0 that didn't go in earlier on when the second half was getting late. And especially considering there were 10 minutes of stoppage time when the crew are known to kind of blow those points away when they should be able to secure them. And there was a Nashville goal scored during the stoppage, but it wasn't an equalizer. It was an own goal via deflection. I believe it was Arfston trying to get the ball to Cucho Hernandez on a center pass, but it goes off of a Nashville defender into the net. They don't ask how, they just ask how many. I will certainly take it any way I can get it. The Columbus crew now fifth in the East, fairly comfortably in a playoff spot, but they're not certain, you know, they're certainly not out of danger in terms of if they go on a cold streak and some of the teams below them get going, they could certainly have that playoff spot get, you know, ripped away from them if they're not careful about it. Later in the week, Don Garber made a visit to Columbus in order to announce that the Columbus crew and Lower.com will host the 2024 MLS All-Star Game. This is obviously a big leap from where the market was just five years ago in MLS with you know, plan, the plans were that MLS was going to move out of Columbus altogether. And this probably means that Lionel Messi is probably going to be coming to town in Columbus for next year's All-Star game. Uh, because even if Lionel Messi isn't doesn't set the world on fire in MLS, I'm pretty sure he'll either, he'll either get voted in or the commissioner will make sure that, that Lionel Messi is a part of the MLS All-Star festivities next season. That's going to be huge for the city. That's going to be an attraction point in and of itself. If you're not, if you know, if MLS All-Star All -Star game doesn't automatically get you in, Lionel Messi being somewhere definitely will. That's going to be a huge get for Columbus. And as far as this year's MLS All-Star festivities, the game will feature the Columbus Crew players Lucas Zellerayan and Aiden Morris. Aiden Morris was voted in and Zellerayan was a coach's pick. So good for those two guys getting recognized. Lucas Zellerayan hit his, you know, if you are if you follow MLS, if you follow the crew, you know how good he is. And, and Aiden Morris getting in there as a 21-year-old, certainly nothing to sneeze at. So good on him. The crew are back in action at Lower.com tomorrow against the New York Red Bulls. So hopefully they can secure three more points there against a team that is lower on the table than them. Now for baseball, both the Guardians and the Reds are deadlocked in their divisions that are admittedly pretty bad. But hey, uh, I'll take a playoff race any way I can get it. The Reds' win streak ended at 12 over the past week. They did lose a few in a row, but they did get back on track in Baltimore and ended up taking the series and extra innings there against the Orioles. They are back in Cincy to play the Padres today. And the Guardians going 500 in their two series against the Brewers and the Royals, including a brutal loss yesterday where I already made the video of Jose Ramirez stealing home to take the lead in extra innings, but the Royals coming right back with a walk-off and taking that win from them. That stinks. They are currently playing in Chicago against the Cubs so they're they're deadlocked for those division races again the the central divisions in both the AL and the NL are pretty bad so it's anyone's division except for you know the Royals are, are bad but for for the Guardians and Reds they can certainly both grab their divisions and maybe head into the playoff spot as division winners uh, I wish I had some more Browns updates I'll obviously continue to do the positional preview series that I've been doing for the Browns but it's really dry in terms of new Browns news. I guess they, they hired somebody named Erica Mulman as the senior vice president of corporate spon of corporate partnerships, excuse me, uh, which just sounds like kind of a made up position that just sounds like something that you pretend is a real job to get one of your friends like a cushy six figure position. But senior VP of corporate partnerships, sure, that's that's my Browns update. Again, I wish I had more, but they're not really doing much as of right now. 
and end the video off with some minor Blue Jackets updates. They signed restricted free agent Trey Fix Wolanski to a two-year, two-way deal. His minor's salary is pretty high for what they can offer in the minors, and that's something that has been a bit of a theme without these two-way deals for the Blue Jackets is that the, the minor's salaries has been pretty high in the six figures, so you, you figure that if they were going to stick around, the only way they would stick around in their careers is if they were, you know, if they're going to be in the minors, they're going to be, get paid pretty well to be there. And Dmitry Voronkov has had some issues with his visa. He won't be at development camp July 1st through the 5th. Uh, it's not something that I'm necessarily all that concerned about unless this becomes an issue for training camp with, I know with Russian players, there's always the, the nervousness that maybe they'll be held back for whatever reason, but Kirill Marchenko came over here without any issue last summer. Even with, you know, even with guys that did have some issues, like there with Kirill Kaprizov, he had a bit of trouble before he eventually made his way over. So, again, unless this becomes an issue that persists deeper into the offseason and in training camp, it's not something I'm going to worry about quite yet. And also, a happy retirement to former Blue Jackets player Marcus Nudavara. He had some issues with his hip. He can't really go anymore. His career ends at 29 years old, which is early, probably earlier than he wanted it to. But he certainly put together a, a pretty nice career for himself in, in the NHL, especially with the Columbus Blue Jackets where and, and with the Florida Panthers as well. But I mostly remember his time as a Blue Jackets fan, obviously. So... Happy retirement to Mark Nudavara, hoping the best for him throughout the rest of his life. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far into it, leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like it. I will see you at the next one.